Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Okay. Yeah, I'm Mark Miller, uh, Chief Scientist of Agoric, and I have been on the uh, ECMAScript Standards Committee, this committee that standardizes JavaScript uh, since 2007. Today, I'm going to talk about using SES, uh, Secure ECMAScript, to reduce supply chain risk. Any discussion of supply chain risk should start with the event stream incident. In the event stream incident, the maintainer of an NPM package named event stream, just a general purpose, low level utility, published an upgrade of the package that contained a targeted attack on the BitPay cryptographic wallet. Uh, the BitPay wallet was a application written in JavaScript in the same way that a zillion other applications are written in JavaScript. Uh, a, a small amount of code which constitutes the application itself and then importing package dependencies on a bunch of other packages that in turn had dependencies that sucked in this whole graph of other packages, all of which were running, were linked together and running in the same JavaScript environment. NPM reports that of the typical JavaScript package, only 3% of it is code specific to the package. The 97% of the code that's linked together are other third party packages that you don't have any particular good reason to trust. This dependency graph here is from MetaMask. Uh, the purple dot that has the great fan out is MetaMask itself. All the rest of these dots are other packages in their dependency graph. And if run under normal JavaScript in the normal way, all of these dots would be red. What we mean by red is red versus green is a measure of the risk that you have from the package. In normal JavaScript, anything can damage everything. Anything, everything is fully vulnerable to anything. And that's why all of the dots would be red MetaMask uses SES to partition risk, to give each package only the least authority needed, follow the principle of least authority, of give each package only the authority it needs to do its proper job. However, some packages still need significant authority to do the proper job. Most of it's green. Most packages need very, very little authority and can be verified to need little authority by static analysis. But the ones that are red are the ones that still need a dangerous amount of authority to do their job. So that's the place to focus security review effort. By running all this code under CES and by doing this analysis, we can focus our precious time in security reviews to the code that actually poses danger to us and we can substantially reduce the danger posed by the other code. So why is it that in JavaScript, everything is fully vulnerable to everything? A good example is the attack of prototype poisoning. The primordial objects are the objects like array.prototype or the array.prototype.push method that all the arrays inherit that are the primordials are the ones that exist before code starts running. And in normal JavaScript, all of the primordial objects are fully mutable. So any code can, for example, replace the array prototype push method changing the behavior of all of the arrays created by all of the other packages that have been linked together. 
So the first defense that Cess brings is it freezes all of the primordials. It turns all of the primordials into transitively immutable state where there's no more mutable state left anywhere among the primordial objects or ability to do IO. The other source of attack is through the shared global object. All the code linked together all share one global object and the global object is also the one that contains the host objects like the document object in the browser, uh, all of the, each host, each context that JavaScript runs in provides some powerful global objects that provide the ability to do IO to the outside world. And because everything runs in the global scope, everything has access to all of that power. So JavaScript, so SES introduces an abstraction called the compartment. The compartment creates separate global objects and separate global scopes inside the overall JavaScript system. And what we, what we in fact do is we run each package in its own compartment and we endow that compartment with only the globals that that package needs. So over here, we have a compartment C1 that is unendowed with anything. And the expression X plus Y evaluated there just gives a reference error because there are no X and Y globals. C2 is a compartment that's endowed with global variables X and Y that have a different value and X and Y run in there gives a result. So how did we get from normal JavaScript to SES? The main thing about our approach is that it's subtractive. It's mostly subtractive. When we started, when I started in 2007, ECMAScript was this incredibly messy language with crazy constructs like the with construct that provided non-static scoping or other constructs that provided non-local causality, action and distance. So the first thing we did with ECMAScript 5 is we introduced strict mode. And strict mode is a sub-language that is mostly designed to omit all of the most crazy parts of JavaScript. However, even strict mode has these problems that make everything vulnerable to anything. All of the primordial objects are mutable, there are these host objects that are accessible to, to everything because they're bound to global variables. And there's that per realm global object, everything's sharing one big global object. SES makes the primordials pure, removes all mutable state or IO, and introduces the compartment to, to create per compartment global scopes and global objects. But the important point here is that the, the change from ES strict to SES is so minor that a tremendous amount of old code, of old JavaScript code not written to run under SES, nevertheless does run successfully under SES. And that claim is borne out by experience at a number of different companies. All of these projects are using SES. In the right-hand column is JavaScript for embedded systems. SES is the, the, the standard JavaScript for embedded systems. And Modable makes a uh, engine for, SE, for embedded uh, that out of the box is an SES machine. And they're running it even on light bulbs and even on light bulbs making use of the security properties of SES. And these security properties are sufficiently strong that they even provide some degree of mitigation, some degree of defense against side channels. It's not the, the, the main target. The main target is integrity. 
is reducing authority, ability to cause effects. But the observation about side channels is all these side channels that people worry about, including Meltdown and Spectre, all rely on the untrusted code, the attacker code being able to measure duration. Those green dots visibly don't, most of them don't need any of the objects that would enable them to measure duration. So under SES, we can deny them the ability to measure duration. So over here is a shot of the SES challenge page in which we provide a side channel, a very loud side channel that is leaking a secret. And it's sufficiently loud that it's easy for code written in SES, but provided with the powerful date object, the date object that reveals the current time and therefore enables measurement of duration. It's easy for that code to read the side channel and, and thereby uh, figure out the secret. With the same page, if you turn off the power of the data object, so the data object is no longer providing the ability to measure duration, uh, it still provides the ability to represent dates, to parse dates, to print dates, all of that, then we challenge you to write code in the presence of this incredibly loud, easy to read side channel, if you can measure duration, we challenge you to write code that will nevertheless figure out what the secret is. So how does this work? Well, we talked about the compartments being able to be endowed with different globals. The C3 compartment is created with no endowments. It, uh, the a, a compartment by default has almost all of JavaScript, has all the global variables defined by JavaScript, has all uh, essentially all of the properties and all of the methods defined by standard JavaScript, which is why old code still works. But the date object is a safe that's provided by default is a safe variant of the date object where date.now gives nan. However, depending on the flip on the switch you flip on the challenge page, if you provide the powerful date object, the way you the way the code does that is the code running in the start compartment, the code that's running in the global that you're starting with. It's sort of in, 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 in the implicit compartment before any other compartments are created, that has all the powerful globals. So when that makes another compartment, it can endow the other compartment with the powerful date, in which case the attack can work because the attacker can read the date. Let's go into that in a little bit more depth to understand in detail how SES does surgery on the normal JavaScript environment in such a way as to provide strong safety, but with a minimal impact on existing code. The graph you see here is a sample, is a representative sample of some of the objects in the primordial uh, JavaScript heap. This, uh, and the arrows here are how they're wired together. Uh, the vertical arrow is inherits from. Let's first of all just remove the obvious inherits from from the graph. All functions inherit from function.prototype, so we don't need that noise. And in addition, there is the primordial global object which we're going to treat specially. The global object has global variables, which are alias to properties that point into this primordial heap. And it has a global this variable that points at itself. And some of the objects in this primordial heap have a special status. They are evaluators. They evaluate code 
code has to be evaluated in some scope. So the evaluators evaluate code in the scope of the global object. The global object also has these host objects like document or XML HTTP request or in node, the process object uh, in excess running on a light bulb, the ability to turn the light bulb on and off. All of these come in as host objects. And the, the host objects are dangerous by design. They're intended to provide IO. And date, as we've seen, is an outlier of the JavaScript heap. It's one of the rare objects standardized by JavaScript that provide this IO ability to read the current time. So because those objects are dangerous, the global object itself is dangerous. Because the global object is dangerous, the evaluators that evaluate code in the, in the scope of that global object are dangerous because now that code can reach the dangerous objects like date and document. So what we need to do, what SES needs to do, is do surgery on this graph to partition the safe versus unsafe worlds and to do it in a way that has the minimal impact on existing code. So we pull off all of the unsafe objects into the graph on the left representing the start compartment and the graph on the right are the frozen primordials, the frozen shared intrinsics, which are pure, which have no mutable state and that are safely shareable. And the key thing is to notice is that between these two subgraphs, the only arrows that cross between them are going to the right. The start compartment subgraph points into the intrinsics and there's no, there's no pointers in the opposite direction. The two dates, uh, the date in red on the left is the original powerful date. The white date that remains in the frozen intrinsics is a safe variant that has all of the ability to represent dates, date instances, and to do formatting, et cetera, but not to provide the current time. So because all of the arrows cross only rightward, we can create other compartments where the other compartments also point into this graph in a similar manner And then we can run old code in the scope of that compartment. And because the evaluators evaluate code in, in some global object, each compartment has to have its own evaluators. It has to have its own global object, but it doesn't have to have much else that is per compartment. So these compartments are really featherweight. They, they cost creating a few objects per compartment. So you can have many, many little compartments and very little overhead. The code that creates compartments can also endow the compartment with emulated host objects with, with, or attenuated host objects, with host objects that the start compartment wants to endow the other compartment with such that the code in the other compartment thinks it's running in a normal JavaScript environment, except that the primordials are frozen, but it finds on the global object that it sees as global, whatever host objects uh, were endowed by the creator of that compartment. And the compartment abstraction itself is made available. And it's, as we've seen, has an evaluate method. So the compartment abstraction is itself an evaluator. So in addition, each compartment, I'm sorry, each, yes, each compartment has its own compartment constructor. And that is the brief overview of CES. For more information about CES and what Agoric builds on CES, Agoric is building a smart contracting platform that runs on both blockchains and non-blockchains. Uh, and provides distributed secure CES built on the CES that I've explained. Um, so all of those are explained at agoric.com. Uh, and the particular challenge that we invite you 
to take to try to read that side channel uh, is at that URL. And now I'll take questions. Benjamin Greenbaum uh, wrote a question about how do I use this? Um, can you please elaborate, Mark? I how see that there, that there are a bunch of questions here. Sorry. So let's start with Benji. So uh, I would start by taking a look at the source code uh, for the challenge problem. Uh, and there's many pages that are linked to from agoric.com. Uh, there's other URLs that I can uh, post, um, uh, which I uh, hope that you can relay to the group that gives you good starting points for using CES. But essentially what's going on is that CES has both the status of being a secure shim, which is how we're currently using it on browsers, on Node, uh, in other environments. Uh, so it's a as a shim, it's a, just a library that you load to get things started uh, in a base JavaScript environment. And it only depends on the things that are part of standard JavaScript. So any system, whether browser or node or something else that provides a JavaScript engine that conforms to the full language uh, should be able to run our shim library and to use it in a secure manner. Uh, and all of those organizations that I mentioned are using, are using the, um, except for embedded, are using the shim. Uh, the embedded use is, is using the XS engine, which directly builds CES rather than using the ship. It's actually, a, it's, it's some of the mechanism uh, currently does come from the shim running on top of their engine, but it's, it's, it's more of a mixture. Uh, and then once, you've, once you're in the test environment, you're still running in the start compartment that has all of the fully powerful globals that you're used to. But from there, you can create other compartments. Uh, now, in order to use it to load in a graph of other packages and analyze those other packages for least authority and link them together by least authority, the system to look at in par is in particular Lava Mode and MetaMask uh, and uh, Agoric is in the process of integrating Lava Mode in uh, with the overall uh, CES distribution. And it's Lava Mode that, that will automate most of the work of linking together a dependency graph of packages while doing the static analysis to see what authority do they obviously need? And then to arrange things to give them only that authority. All right. Uh, now we have another question from Dom again. Um, and he's asking, is it relevant in Angular apps where security is mostly baked in? I'm, I'm sorry, the, the audio, your audio is well, muffled. Supposed to, well, uh, yeah. So Ida is asking uh, about combining um, combining SES in Angular apps. Yeah, um, uh, no, uh, I do not believe that has been a successful integration. Uh, the restrictions that SES requires correspond mostly, correspond very closely to recognized JavaScript best practices. The main way in which some old code fails to run under CES is if it modifies the primordials, uh, like the example we showed of array.prototype.push assigning an attacker function to that. Well, that example was preventing an attack, but some code does some surgery, some systems do some surgery on the primordials in startup in order to uh, get some deeper integration into JavaScript. And SES treats that as an attack and prevents it. Uh, so uh, 
so while there's much old code that does run under uh, CES, anything that does that level of surgery on the primordials does not. All right, um, Benji is mentioning the Shum code is uh, a really, really interesting piece of code to read. That's that's what Benji is saying. Um, yeah, definitely. All yeah. right. Well, um, thank, you, thank you for, for um, we also invite everybody to read all of our code and to comment on it and to point out bugs. Uh, and to you know, send us pull requests, whatever. Uh, everything that we're doing is completely open source. It's all on GitHub, both SES itself, and all the things we're building on top of it, all the way to our blockchain-based smart contracting system. And most of the other projects on it are also fully open source. Cool, so that was an amazing lecture. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, Mark. It was a pleasure to host you here. Yeah, pleasure to uh, be here.